Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the ESU Straight to the Point webinar series, where we talk about all things ESU to help you and your student get through the admissions process. My name is Emily Elbert, and I'm the recruitment coordinator with Emporia State Admissions. And today I have a couple of guests with me that I'd like you to meet. I have Alma, Danielle, and Abby um, from the Rudd Foundation, who are going to talk a little bit later um, in this webinar more about the Full Ride Rudd Scholarship. But the first thing I'm going to get started with is admissions reminders. So just a reminder to you and your students that the FAFSA is now opened. It opened October 1st. There is a priority deadline by February 1st, so be sure that you're getting started on that as soon as possible. The month of October is also Apply Kansas month. So up until November 2nd, you can actually apply to ESU for free. So make sure your students are getting on our website and applying as soon as they can so they can get that application fee waived. It takes like five to 10 minutes. Um, so not a huge um, length of time there. The next thing I would like to talk about is our scholarship portal. So um, when students are admitted to ESU, the first thing you think about is how am I gonna pay for college, okay? So I talked to you a little bit about FAFSA, but we also have a scholarship portal, a scholarship library with ESU that houses thousands of scholarships. So that actually opens November 1st, so next week. So admitted ESU students will have access to their ESU logins where they'll be able to log into the student um, scholarship library to apply for those scholarships. So be on the lookout for that. There should be some email communication going out for that next week. The next thing I'd like to talk about is important dates. Um, so we do have two of our big recruitment events coming up. They're called Black and Golds. Um, so this Saturday is our homecoming Black and Gold. Um, we've got lots of registrations going for it, but the registration for it will be open all week. Um, so feel free to sign up and come. Our Black and Golds are perfect events to find out everything about ESU. So we're gonna do a presentation. You're gonna take a tour of campus, the residence halls, and we're even gonna feed you for free. So. Take a look into that. Our next one is, and our next and last one is going to be next Friday, November 4th. So be sure to um, sign up for those and come see ESU. The next thing is a residential life showcase. So we like to term this Res Life Showcase. This is an opportunity for students to see all three residence halls on campus. It's actually one of my favorite events on campus because I was not a student who got the opportunity to live on campus. So I think it's a great way for students who are interested to come to ESU are able to um, find the residence hall that they can call home once they are Hornet. So great opportunity for your student um, to come see the rest of campus. The next thing is the Red Scholarship. So as you know, I got the foundation here today, um, but the Red Scholarship opened on October 3rd and it will be open through December 2nd. So this is a four year full ride scholarship to ESU, but um, I'm not gonna dwell on that any longer. I'm gonna bring our Red Foundation people back on where they're gonna give you a short presentation to kind of describe a little bit more about what the Red Scholarship is. Awesome. Well, thanks, Emily, for the introduction. Um, my name is Alma Hidalgo Blankenship. I'm one of the program managers uh, at the Red Foundation, and I'm joined with Danielle, who is also one of our program managers uh, with the foundation. Um, so we will go ahead and just jump in and start talking about what the Red Scholarship is and why our uh, future Hornets should apply. Um, so we provide 25 four-year full ride scholarships to Emporia State, Fort Hayes State, and Wichita State. Um, and of course, you know, we have uh, an amazing cohort at Emporia State about 20 scholars, um, and it is a full ride. Um, in the last few years, we've actually been pretty lucky to uh, provide 30 scholarships instead of 25. So uh, we always tell students, you never know, take the opportunity, apply, uh, make sure that you get that application submitted. Um, but with the Red Scholarship, we look for students who have the great determination, work ethic, um, that academic success, um, and overall just potential to make something um, of themselves through their college experience. So the, our founder, uh, Leslie Red, wanted to provide um, the opportunity for students to not have to worry about that financial burden when going to college and pursue their, their passions and their dreams of, of getting that college degree. Um, so the scholarship does cover tuition and fees, books and supplies, and room and board. Um, and we are a last dollar. So what that means is that after any additional scholarships that the student might have, we come in and pick up the rest, um, the remaining balance of, of, of your bill. Um, and if you don't have any other scholarships and we're your only one, 
we still cover everything for you, which is amazing. Um, in order to apply for the Red Scholarship, um, you do have to be a Kansas resident. Um, you have to have a 3.0 unweighted GPA your senior year. Um, and then you also have to apply for FAFSA and be Pell Grant eligible. Um, and with that, you'll find that out throughout whenever you apply for FAFSA. So that already opened October 1. So you should have already started that application. Um, and you don't have to be a full Pell Grant eligible eligible either. Um, that's a question that we get a lot. So as long as you have some sort of amount that you're eligible for, you're able to apply for the scholarship. Um, and then once you become a Red Scholar, in order to maintain your scholarship, um, you have to continue to maintain that 3.0 cumulative GPA for the academic year. Uh, graduate in four years, and we help you with that um, through summer school. We pro provide summer school, summer housing, and then we also meet with our students uh, once a month to make sure that they're doing okay in their classes and make sure they've you know, we pick up any red flags that might be going on in their academics to make sure that you stay on track to graduate in four years. Um, and then also networking with our peers. So uh, we have what's called the Red Scholar family, and we expect our scholars to be involved in our program and be connected with their peers as well. Um, and then attend um, our programming that we have uh, throughout the year as well, where we will uh, talk about here in the next slide. So beyond the dollar, so with the Red Scholarship, uh, we like to mention that we are beyond the dollar. Um, so we don't just give you a, you know, a big old check and say good luck in college and, and have fun. Uh, there's a lot of information that we make sure that you are also getting through through our scholarship. So like I mentioned earlier, um, it is a four year full ride. Um, and with that, we expect our students to live on campus all four years. Um, and the reason for that is that we, we believe in the on campus housing and, and living on campus because you have all those resources on campus already to get connected, to get engaged, um, to get involved on campus. So uh, by removing the financial burden of, of college, we expect our students to go beyond the classroom and get involved um, through a ver various different ways of, of involvement. So um, our scholars are involved in Student Government Association. Um, Abby, who's on, on, on tonight, she was an ambassador with Emporia State as well. So a variety of different things. And and resources for academics as well. So if you need a tutor, we have someone on campus that we can connect you with rather than living off campus and not being connected to all those resources. Um, and then also, you know, that Red Scholar support. A lot of our scholars, you know, when they're upperclassmen, they tend to be roommates with other Red Scholars that are like-minded, that are involved in uh, similar things that they're involved. So you have those people around you that are going to support you and make sure that you're doing well um, while in college. Um, and then also that one-on-one -on -one coaching that I mentioned a little bit ago. Uh, so myself, Danielle, and Corey, our director, we meet with our scholars at each campus once a month throughout all four years um, to make sure that they're doing well and that they're, you know, meeting the requirements for their academics. And, you know, if they're having issues with a, with a class or, you know, do we drop it now? Do we take a different one? What are we, what are our options? And we make sure that you're doing well in the classroom and outside of the classroom. So that's one of my favorite things about our scholarship is that we provide, you know, pretty much full full round support. So, you know, if you're struggling with something at home or, you know, mom is not doing well, we have those conversations with you to make sure that you're, you know, mentally mentally okay and that you're doing well um, in, the, in the classroom and outside of the classroom and that you're taking care of yourself to, you know, perform the best of your ability. Um, so this next slide, I'm actually going to have Abby kind of talk a little bit about our programming and our professional development and what she gets to experience as a Rudd Scholar. So with the Rudd Foundation, um, we also provide professional development, like I mentioned. Um, so twice a year, we host what's called our Rudd Scholar Summits, and that's where we bring all three campuses together uh, to, usually it's Wichita, because that's kind of the central location for all three campuses. So we have breakout sessions, all 100 plus scholars get together. Um, we have a keynote speaker that we have um, as well, you know, share about their experience and support students, you know, in professional development or, you know, how to overcome something in their life. Um, so a variety of different things that we have. So one fun thing that I like to share is that our freshmen actually have the opportunity to start working on their LinkedIn profile. So as freshmen, they already have that resource, you know, ready to go. And by the time that they're seniors, um, they we, re we encourage them to have over 500 LinkedIn connections, which is awesome because not a lot of students, you know, understand the benefits of LinkedIn. So 
that's one example uh, with regards to the professional development that we have um, our scholars uh, participate. And I see Abby is on, on already. Um, so I'll have her just kind of talk about what, you know, the Red Scholar family and what that community aspect has, has meant to her. Yeah, well, hello, everybody. I'm Abby Rowden. I'm a 2019 Red Scholar here at Emporia State. Um, so as soon as you come into Emporia State um, or college as a freshman, you instantly have a family, which is really unique um, to any other program. Um, and so what that means, um, your very first year, so as a freshman, you're paired with an upperclassman um, who's your mentor. Um, so they are able to um, kind of just make sure that you're adjusting to college life, um, you're transitioning well. Um, so that is super unique. I definitely um, really appreciate having that opportunity. Um, it was really awesome. Um, and then usually every month we will do some sort of um, some sort of community engagement um, type activities. So we'll, we'll all meet together. Um, we have done like community service. We've done campus cleanups. We've gone bowling, skating. Um, we go to HAPS at Applebee's. Um, so we just have spend that time to bond, get to know each other, make sure that we're all being supported as much as we can. Um, and so that's really awesome. Um, and then the Red Foundation also supports us in our outside of activities. So like Alma said, I was an ESU ambassador. I've also been a member of FBLA Collegiate. Um, you can see the photo on the screen is from our state competition. Um, so in that, our, um, our business Reds, we um, supported each other through that kind of thing as well. Um, and then that professional development, again, like Alma uh, mentioned, is super important. Um, that's definitely been one of the most impactful things that um, I have gained from the Red Foundation is that professional development. Um, I'm fully supported through every single process, whether it's LinkedIn, um, creating my resume, applying for a job, interviewing, looking over offer letters, anything like that. Um, so that has been one of the most beneficial things to me personally um, from being a Red Scholar. Awesome. Thank you, Abby. And Abby's actually going through the job search process right now because she's graduating in December. So um, we have that opportunity to kind of, you know, walk with our scholars and in those experiences. So um, it's a great way to not only, you know, graduate debt free, but also have all of this additional support that you get through our scholarship. Um, so I think we're ready for the next slide. Um, and this slide just kind of highlights um, all of the involvement and the success that our scholars have on their campuses. So um, I believe Abby is on there. Yeah, she's on there on the, on the on the screen. Um, so our scholars are, are highly involved. They have the opportunity to you know pursue leadership roles, uh, whether it's through the university and their communities on the national level, like Abby just mentioned. Um, a variety of different experiences they get they get to have, and we support them to make sure that they're succeeding in the classroom and outside the classroom. And you know these are going to be the leaders of, of tomorrow, and that's something that our founder uh, wanted for our students to have the opportunity of you know getting a variety of different hands-on experiences that help them mold them into the in, into the person that they will be in their careers and in their communities. Awesome. So I think this slide is um, where Danielle will come in. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. So because we are able to take the financial burden away from our scholars, we are super excited for them to be able to get involved and do those things, especially from that last slide and be the leaders on the campus and put more energy into their academics and some of the goals that they have. And so currently we do have 110 scholars across all three campuses. And at Emporia, we have 20 scholars specifically. Um, and then they're all having about an average of a 3.78 cumulative GPA. So they are putting a lot of work into the classroom and they are all on track to have a, to graduate in four years or better. So we currently have a hundred percent graduation rate in four years and um, a good chunk of them are actually graduating within three and a half years. So that's really exciting for our scholars um, to be able to have the opportunity. We are, uh, we have about 41 different majors that are represented. So that's the cool thing about our scholarship is it's not specific to one major. Uh, students can study whatever they want. We have education majors, business majors, engineers, all sorts of majors that are out there. Um, we do provide um, summer housing. And a big reason we do that is because we understand that some of our scholars are coming from rural Kansas and they might not have the opportunities to gain professional development 
experiences in their hometown. And so by providing summer housing and summer classes, it allows the students to be in an area where they can get professional development. And over this past summer, we had 30 plus summer professional development experiences for, um, across all of our scholars, which was really exciting. And then we have um, our first alumni uh, cohort, which was of 19 scholars. So we're really excited. And they graduated with an average GPA of a 3.79. And 45% of them have actually continued on to grad school, which is very exciting for them to feel that they can continue in their education because the financial burden was lifted. And then we are continuing to connect with them and help them as much as we can um, you know, just check in and make sure that they're doing well and keeping them connected to the Rudd Scholar family as we're excited to have, you know, 110 current scholars, but being able to incorporate our alumni as well. Okay, next slide. So this is just a really nice visual to kind of just show like what it would look like to be part of the Rudd Scholar family. Like I said, we have 110 currently with 19 alumni and while we say we give out 25 a year, we have been blessed um, to have a board who really sees the potential in all of our scholars and uh, future scholars to award us up to 30. So this is just a good visual. And now we're gonna show you a really fun video of what it's like when we get to drive around for the best two weeks of the year and surprise all of our winners. Can you bring that prize out for Jake now? There you go. I'm Corey. I'm with the Red Foundation. We give out full ride scholarships, <laughs> and Star is going to be a recipient of our four year full ride to Port Hayes this year, which is worth up to $80,000. Love everybody. <laughs> I'm like shaking right now. I'm like, I have some good news. I just, I just won the um, scholarship. Oh. I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No way. <laughs> it's a hundred thousand dollars. No way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got the scholarship. So hopefully you had a few tears shed there. It's super exciting for us to be able to travel across campus or Kansas and give out these scholarships to well-deserved individuals. Um, but with every cohort, it is about a $1.5 million four-year investment. Um, so we do put a lot of, you know, funds into students going to college, but there's more to it than just that. Um, but some tips, because we are currently open. So our scholarship, um, like Emily said, did open on October 3rd, October 3rd, um, and it does close on October 2nd um, at noon. And so it does take a little bit of time to complete our scholarship. So we do recommend taking about a month to prepare for it. 
Um, and then making sure that you actually finish. Um, only about 50% of students that start the application will actually finish it. So by finishing it, the odds of you being able to come to the next round go up even more. Um, you do need to be Pell Grant eligible and to figure that out is by completing your FAFSA, which you will want to start completing as soon as possible. It did open on October 1st and has about a two to three week turnaround for you to um, get that information back. If you're having issues figuring out, am I Pell Grant eligible? I really don't know how to read this information that they're providing me back. Feel free to email us um, at info at rudfoundation.org and we'd be happy to help you figure that out or if you're having some issues um, getting it back in the timeline uh, before the application is to be submitted, also reach out to us because we'll be happy to help you. We do also require at least one recommend recommendation. If not two, you can uh, do up to two, but it is a form that is sent to your recommender. And so you'll want to start the application early and talk to your recommenders about being a positive recommendation for you and if they say yes, making sure that you get their information in the application uh, as soon as possible. So that way it sends them the link and they have ample amount of time to write a thorough and positive um, recommendation on your behalf. Again, we do have some essays, so it does take a little bit of time, but make sure that you really work to write those essays. Help us understand who you are and really utilize that space because we're gonna ask you for your high school resume as well in a different section where you're talking about, you know, your leadership, the awards you've gotten, the activities you're involved in. So utilize those essays to fill space on, you know, where do you come from? What is your house like? Why have you picked the major that you've picked because of what? And so really filling those um, essays with areas that we're not going to get in the other aspects of the application. And then make sure you get it proofread by, you know, a teacher, a counselor, a mentor, somebody that you trust, uh, because we do want to make sure that it's, you know, proofread and grammatically correct. Um, and while each winner has a unique story, they all have one thing in common. But we really look at who you are and want to know what your unique story is. So like I said, really utilize those essays to portray who you are and all the things that you've done, all the things you've accomplished, the things that you've um, overcome as well. Perfect. So while we love our scholarship because we think it's amazing and there's so much that goes in with our scholarship besides just the financial burden being lifted from you, we do understand that, you know, you want to get paid or have as much scholarships that you can to be able to go to school. So here are some just additional scholarship tips for you to take with you. Um, start early, get started now. Um, just Emporia, they have their own scholarships that come from the university, but they have a deadline for that. So make sure you're looking um, at those deadlines. Uh, a great way to stay organized is creating a Excel document with every scholarship that you're you know, applying for and then the due date. That way you make sure you're not missing any due dates. You're working on the scholarship deadlines that are coming up quicker than some of the other ones. So go to Excel. That way you stay organized. Have a nice uh, scholarship uh, toolkit because that toolkit is really going to, every scholarship is asking pretty much for the same thing. So our essays are going to be able to translate over to other scholarships that are coming in. And so making sure that, you know, you've saved those essays or you save, you know, your resume and all the things that you're involved in. So that way, as you continue felt scholarships, it goes quicker and quicker each time. And finally, I will just say, you know, take time once a week to look for scholarships and apply for them. Uh, something our director did was scholarship Sundays with uh, her kids where for two hours every Sunday, they sat down and they focused on the scholarships. So that way really provides you time, you know, every week to get as many scholarships as you can. You have to just keep going. Please don't give up because the more times you try, the more outcomes you're going to get. So, because you're going to sit here and, I mean, all of our scholars will even tell you they never thought they'd get our scholarship. So as long as you apply, you never know what's going to happen. And like I said, only 50 apply for our scholarship. So only a handful are going to apply for all the others. So you have to take all your shots, all the opportunities that you can. So with that, um, again, our scholarship is open and it will close December 2nd. And I think we have a few questions that... 
um, Alma and I can both kind of go through. So what does that application entail on average? How long does the application take to complete? So yes, it does take a bit because um, like I said, there are two essays and then we're going to ask for, you know, your high school resume. So I encourage you to start the application this week. At least just get in there and see what we're asking for so you can get started on it because it does take, I would say, at least two weeks. Um, but if you want to make sure you have enough people to read over um, for grammar and for punctuations and then get that recommendation in, it's going to take a little bit longer. Yeah, and our application. Um, so Danielle mentioned the two essays. So we have those two essays. Uh, we asked for your high school resume. So uh, involvement in school, outside of school. Um, mm -hmm. We we know that not everybody can be you know president of every student organization or vice president you know while in while in high school. Um, but if you're working you know 30, 40 hours a week, if you have to you know stay home in the afternoons and evenings to care for younger siblings, or if you care for other family members, or you know whatever your responsibilities are, that is involvement to us and so we want to hear about that as well so don't just think high school involvement you know clubs organizations things like that that is important to us but we also want to know what you're doing outside of the classroom um, and then those two recommendation forms that um, Danielle mentioned one is only required but we have the opportunity to you know submit two um, and then you know just make sure that you have that ACT score as well so we do require an ACT score there's not a specific score that we ask for we always get that question asked you know do I have to have a 30 ACT, for example, you know, our scholars range anywhere from, you know, 18 range all the way up to a 33. So um, our scholars, you know, are, are well-rounded and, you know, we know that, you know, this, this ACT score doesn't define who you are and you have more to give. So um, those are the, the main things with the, with the application. And then of course your FAFSA and being and submitting that Pell Grant eligibility form as well. Awesome. Um, the next question is, do you have to live on campus? Yes, we do require you to live on campus all four years, which I hope that does not deter anybody because honestly, all these housing accommodations at all three of our campuses are way better than when I went to school and I've not been out for that long. Um, they've all gone through great renovations. And like Alma mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we just really feel so strongly about you living on campus because the resources that you need throughout your four years of college are right there. You can walk out of your residence hall room or even just the building and you're right there on campus with all of your friends, all the resources that you need, access to food. Um, and we pay for all of that. So you never have to stress about, you know, a roof over your head or food to go in your belly. <laughs> yeah, Abby, I don't know if you want to talk about what your experience has been living on campus all four years. And then someone asked about um, involvement that you have through the foundation. So you talked a little bit about that, but you can add on if you want. Yeah, so living in the residence halls has definitely been great. I've actually lived in all three buildings um, here on campus. Um, all of them have their unique different uh, little quirks and they've all been super great. Um, but it's been really awesome to not only have the support of the Red Foundation, but also of the residential life staff. Um, every single floor that you're ever gonna be on, you're gonna have a residence assistant, um, your RA. Um, so they are able to be there um, to answer any questions you have about campus or if you're having problems with your roommate um, or anything like that, they're definitely there to help. Um, and then not only do you have your RAs, but you also have the professional staff through the residential life office. Um, and so they've been super helpful. Um, one of the residential life staff here at Emporia State is actually our Blue Key advisor as well. And Blue Key Honor Society is another club that I'm involved in. Um, and so um, they're involved in several different areas of campus. So it's just been great support from Res Life. Um, and then literally your classes, um, if you work on campus, all of that is right outside of your door, um, which has been super awesome to be able to, you don't have to pay for gas or anything like that too. So that definitely lifts that financial burden as well. Um, so that's been super great. Uh, was there another one you guys wanted me to cover? Um, I don't know if you want to just touch a little bit more on, you know, the involvement in the, the Red Scholar community. Okay. Yeah. So um, we do have um, a lot of Red Scholars on each individual campus. So like they've mentioned, we have 20 here at Emporia State currently. Um, and all of us, um, 
I've already mentioned this, but um, it's something that's so crucial and so different about our program is that uh, we are a family. Um, we support each other. Um, I remember there was one time I um, was in a difficult situation, had some personal things going on, um, and I could just call up um, Alma, Danielle, Corey, any of them. Um, they're pretty much there for us 24-7. Um, and then not only that, but um, Corey had one of our other Red Scholars come over just to sit with me and talk with me. Um, so that was really helpful to have that support, not only in my academic life, but also in my personal life as well, because your personal life impacts your academic life so much. Um, so having that support, not only from our foundation staff, but also from our current Red Scholars has just, it's, it's been huge, um, especially going two years during COVID. Um, it's yeah. it's been so huge and so impactful to me. Awesome, thanks, Abby. Um, and then uh, someone asked if the essay questions change every year. Um, they don't. Uh, we've kept the same questions for the since the scholarship started, I believe. Um, but if they do change, we will make sure to to let everybody know. But the two questions on that for the two essays are an autobiography of yourself, um, and then the second one is a time that you overcame something in your life, um, whether it's in school, personal life, whatever it may be. Um, and then when you are writing those essays, we did share this with some students yesterday. Uh, make sure that you're not just talking about, you know, what your involvement is, what you do in school, because we're already finding that out through your high school resume portion of the application. So make sure you use that first essay and that autobiography too to mention other things about yourself and, and who you are and, and what you bring to the table. So that's a fun tip for you guys as well. Um, and then I think the other question um, was, when are the Red Scholarships yeah. awarded? Um, so timeline-wise for us, um, uh, the application does close December 2nd, and then we will be reviewing applications uh, pretty much through the month of December into early January. Um, and then mid-January to mid-February is when we will have our 50 finalists come uh, into our office here in Wichita for their in-person interview. So there is an interview process in person. Um, and then after that interview process is over, uh, we will uh, have the really tough job of selecting our 25, uh, potentially 30, kind of just depends on, you know, our, our pool and, and you know, what our, what our board um, has to say. Um, but that those winners, the 25 winners will be announced uh, before spring break is typically when we, when we announce the winners. Yeah. Awesome. I don't know if there was any other questions? Mm -mm. Did I miss nope. anything? Okay. That's all it. Well, thank you guys. Um, so that's the red team. Um, thank you, red team. Um, the last thing I'm going to do today is kind of go over some of our registrations questions. So one of the ones that we had um, is, should you still apply for apply for the red scholarship if you are not Pell eligible? So you are required to be Pell eligible to apply for the red scholarship, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, if anybody has questions or, you know, concerns about FAFSA, like Danielle said, you guys can email us at info at rudfoundation.org. Um, and so we will, we can assist you with any questions that you have about the scholarship, even in Poria State and what that process looks like with, you know, bringing our scholarship to, to ESU and whatnot. Um, we, we can help you answer those questions. And, and if we need an admissions person, we can send you to Emily. So... <laughs> Awesome. Um, another question was, if my incoming freshman has a GPA of 3.0 and a weighted GPA of 3.25 at the end of junior year, does he need to retake the ACT to improve his composite of 19? So in order to get into ESU, um, you need a 2.25 GPA or higher or a 21 or higher on your ACT. So by your son's requirements, his unweighted GPA will get him into ESU. However, if he has above a 3.0 GPA and a 21 or higher on his ACT, he can qualify for a presidential scholarship, which will be a scholarship in the amount of some, some sort of money, just depends on how high his ACT and GPA are, and it will be renewable for four years as long as he maintains a 3.0 or higher in college. So I do recommend taking the ACT at least twice, especially if he's still a junior. Um, just to see if he can get that score higher than a 21. Um, next question, I believe it's the last one. What should we be doing right now to be in a good spot to start school in fall of 23? Um, right now, apply to your colleges that you're interested, your top colleges, apply for FAFSA, apply for the Red Scholarship. Um, housing um, app part one is opening. So if you're admitted to ESU, you're welcome to start filling out that first housing app. Um, part one, and then our scholarship portal will be opening next week. So that's a good place to start right now. 
when is the deadline to get the dorm that you want? So the way that ESU's residence hall application works is there's two parts. So like I just told you, part one is open now. Part two will open in February. Um, it's kind of like a lottery system. There is a priority deadline of May 1st. So um, as long as you fill it out before that date, you're going to get in that first lottery pool with those students. And our residence hall, um, like Abby was saying earlier, um, our employees that work there are super great um, with the students and they actually really try their best to get first preferences selected for dorm rooms. So when a student fills out the res hall application part two, they will actually select four different preferences. So preferences can be anything from a specific building that they want to live in, a specific room type, um, a themed floor community, which we'll get into later, um, and things along those lines. So they really try hard to get their first preference. So it's a lottery system. It's not who fills it out first gets their room first. Um, what other deadlines are approaching? Red Scholarship closes December 2nd, like we mentioned earlier, so make sure that your students are applying for that. Um, make sure that they're applying to ESU, WSU, or Fort Hayes if they're interested in those schools. Um, FAFSA priority deadline is February 1st. Um, you can fill it out before or after that date, but you're more guaranteed to get the funds that you qualify for if you fill out before that date. Um, for our scholarships at ESU, there is a priority date um, set for February 1st as well. So our scholarship portal opens November 1st um, and those who fill it out before that February 1st priority date um, are more likely to get funds for those scholarships that they're awarded. Um, and then where do we find available scholarships? So the scholarship library. So once your student is admitted to ESU, um, we will send them their uh, admittance email um, as well as information about the scholarship library next week. So you guys will be able to um, get into that as soon as it's open. But I think that's what, all that we have today. Um, the last thing I want to say is thank you for watching us tonight. Thank you to the red team and thank you to our back man. Um, supporting us through this uh, webinar today. Um, our next webinar is going to be Wednesday, November 30th. We're very popular with Wednesdays. Um, it's going to be 6.30 to 7 again. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, the scholarships that are offered through the scholarship library, how to do housing at part one, and then what to expect when we come back in the spring. And that's all that we have for you. Stingers up!